What's up, everybody? This is your girl Erica from the Classy Climb blog. We are leaving Houston, all right? You know, um, drop your city and state. I'm always sad to leave Houston radio. They have amazing radio, lots of like old school black songs and independent black songs. Love that. Always miss it when I leave. Um, but I want to talk to you guys today about proximity matters, right? I always stay in the Galleria when I do come here. When I do stay, I stay in the Galleria area. And many people go, oh, that Galleria, those people that make me sick, those rich people, you know, driving Bentleys and Range Rovers. And I go, you cannot be rich if you hate the rich. You cannot be doing well if you hate people who do well. This is very much a... Uh, proximity thing this is a very much a you have to think about who are you associated with now we can always talk about the Jim Rohn the five people you're around you know makes up the five you know five broke friends of the six broke friend and and I my here's my thing to that because my parents used to say on the reverse they used to say on the reverse well you know water doesn't sink a ship it's only when you let the water in and of course the argument to that is uh you know you keep being around water long enough some of it will get in you be around people who cuss all the time and act crazy all the time it'll sink in it's a proximity thing and so i always stay over there and what's sad is i when i'm over there the panhandlers dress a little bit nicer but they're over there and I go, and people go, why are these panhandlers over here with all these businesses that are hiring and these people in these Range Rovers? It's because that's where the money is. They're putting themselves in proximity to people who may feel sorry for them. And instead of giving a dollar, give five or 10 or $20. Same thing with the valet. 12 year old guys, they're like 20s and 30s. But the proximity of the, the particular places they're valeting these are people who are going to throw $20, $30 like it ain't nothing. I've given them $20 for various reasons, right? Like, hey, leave my truck out here. Don't don't you put it up there. And and it's been right there, right? So I'm, I'm sorry if the camera's shaky. I can't get the stand model to tighten up in the back. So anyway, the key about it is proximity. So yesterday I was at a dinner and I hung out all afternoon. I went to Grant Cardone's thing in the day and y'all see the video recap of that when Kari fixes it and it was 2,000 people there clearly see in the crowd and yes this is me being like an observer but you can clearly see in the crowd who were established business people and who weren't right like you could already see like and they you know Grant came on they're like yeah and then when it when they realized okay Grant was going to speak a little while bring other people out to talk which is a classic bait and switch or whatever they were leaving Money Madu left, several people left, I left after a while. I was like, yo, I, I, I know what this is. Uh, and in the parking lot, the parking lot was littered full of Porsches and BMWs. And I don't mean the 300s. I don't mean the 500s. I mean the 700s. I mean the exotic models. I mean the high-end stuff. And as they were leaving, I was talking to these guys in the, in the parking lot. And they were like, yeah, you know, classy bait and stitch. We have stuff we have to do today at our office. This lady, this Asian lady and her white husband were like, oh, yeah, we're going back to our office. This is a Saturday. These people fought through our traffic to come see Grant Cardone. But when they realized Grant wasn't going to be, it was kind of like a mixture of uh, educational stuff and not, and not really him full time. They were like, all right, I'm gone. I have other things to do. Now, what do I mean about that? People who could use that Saturday making money, growing their business, um, are going to go do that. They're going to be like, peace out. They were coming there, even though it was a free event, surprise free event, was for the proximity of Grant Cardone. The proximity of somebody who was wealthier, more established, dropped some gems. Now, did they drop gems? Sure, but it was a company they partnered with, and the company was talking about wholesaling. And essentially, companies like, we have all this money if you give us your deals. So essentially what's gonna happen is a lot of these people are gonna turn into bird dogs, running around getting deals for them, and, and Grant Cardone there, you know, not necessarily Grant Cardone, but the guy he partnered with is going to sit there and get uh, all these people get sending him deals from all over the country, which is a great position to be in to have people working for you 
without you having to go struggle for those deals. It's a great, it's a great ideal. Very smart, um, but not what I would need to be there for. And you can just see people's eyes who had never heard of wholesaling be like, what? What is that? And you're like, you guys, it's wholesaling. Like, the, but the faces of confusion, pure confusion, like amazement and confusion was just interesting. It was truly interesting to see these people like, and this is why, and again, when I think I've talked about a topic too much or I've over talked about it for this channel, you guys are a select group of people who are researching these things. Many people out there in our everyday American life have no clue. They have no clue that they're on low information diets. They pretty much go take, go to work, take their kids to school, come home, eat and very low information house, low information diet. They are not really plugged in or educating themselves every day. They're just not doing that. That's select group of people. That's y'all and other people who are on YouTube searching for these topics. And, and, the, and I sat there and I said, money, my dude, were the people around you looking shocked? He's like, yeah, a bunch of them. And the people around me, I could look around and see their just eyes were like, what is this concept? Like, oh my God, like just mesmerized. Um, but it was funny because it just means, you know, all these things that I think are like, it's oversaturated. Anytime these people tell me, oh, Erica, I want to join this, but it's oversaturated. No, 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 it's not oversaturated. Just you have tapped into it. 99% of people are super tapped into get, getting up, driving to work, and, and going to their job, coming home, watching goof off TV, eat some food, very average everyday lives. On the weekend, do a cookout or two. Um, if they're a single person, go find where the party at. It's, I promise you, you guys be thinking stuff is oversaturated and it's really not. There are so many categories of stuff where people call me and say, Oh, Erica, I would love to do this, but it's oversaturated. I'm like, where? Oversaturated where? Because it's not. Because most people are not thinking like this. People only start thinking like this when they realize, okay, I want to retire. I want to live different. I want to do something different. That's the only time they start thinking and searching videos like this. And then out of the you know million people that are going to research and look at these videos, maybe 10% are going to really go, I'm going to take action. No lie. Like, I mean, like the more you narrow it down, very few people are going to take action. So that's why when I came to Houston last time and my investments, and she came to my boat party, which was like check number one. And then two, she was like, I'm working on a rental. I was like, I'll come see it. I'll come spend time with you because you're already taking the necessary steps. When people come on the YouTube channel and they're like, answer my question, do this, do that. I can, I don't, I ignore them because they really don't want proximity which is like and proximity is like the energy like you're a go-getter I'm a go-getter we're working it together we're gonna move and we're gonna make moves together they just want someone to spoon feed them and that I don't need that I, I don't need that I don't know who what who needs that kind of energy around them but I don't it's a difference so last night um, and a good one is I posted it on Instagram Grant Cardone posted a your reasons why number one reason most people give and this was a great thing the guy was like why would you come here to grant cardo's thing make more money make more money okay he said okay so you make more money then what make more money he's like okay but yeah yeah we get that make more money but what you're gonna do with the money buy assets okay so then if you you're gonna buy assets then then what what after buying assets i'm gonna make more money and it was like okay what is the why and so finally he put this chart up on the reason it's like retirement, taking care of your parents, uh, having more time with your kids, living a different life. You know, all the things that people, you know, it's just like this overhead thought, like if I just get more money and I meet people all the time who make more money and they spend just as much, they'll make, they'll make, you know, hundred K this year and spend 120 K because they're using credit cards, of course. But it's that combination thing where you're like, why do people go to the gym? So I can lose weight. Okay, well, what was losing weight going to do? So I can buy more clothes. You know, it's just like one of those things where you keep asking people what's their true why. And if the why is strong enough, they'll fight for it. Right? If you just say make more money, everybody wants to make more money. But what does that mean? So so after I left there, I went to stop by another event. We went in real estate. Um, but I came too late to hear mobile home elite investors do their talk. 
but I ended up going to dinner with Mobile Home Elite Investors, Chris Sanal out of Houston, big developer, Wendy Madu, uh, um, uh, several other people. I, I don't even know if he wants me to name his name because he took himself off social media. Um, and a couple other people there, Brian, the investor. And it was great. It was amazing because it's just all about proximity. Everybody in there talking had this moment of, yeah, you know, this is some of the headache of business, but this is all the freedom we get. Like we can just pick up and go whenever we can pick up and do whatever. And it was just interesting to see that, just see it, enjoy it, right? That, you know, money is an issue, food is an issue, buying drinks is an issue. Hey, you want some drinks here? Everybody have drinks, everybody have a great time. You know, just enjoy yourself. And the thing about that is it's, it's not that it's rare, you just have to go look for it and cultivate it, right? And cultivate it means um, the speed of trust, the speed of like, are you a consistent, true person? Can people relate to you? And when you start cultivating, it means you're gonna like, you know, I even was gonna stay in Houston today and go to a football game if they had wanted to go as a group because you're cultivating a group atmosphere of like, we're in this together, we're working together, we're going to enjoy whatever together. And when you do that, that's how you kind of cultivate a new kind of group of friends, group of people. That's, you know, that's 101. But it's also about proximity, right? Because if you, and this is and this is the thing, a meal ticket, which I, well, they didn't, but I know some people who have done in the past done that. They would have missed the whole point of you're in proximity of great business, black business owners, right? You're missing the point of you're in proximity of like, people who could help you, talk to you, educate you, whatever. And unfortunately, that's how some people look at it. Some people look at successful people as a meal ticket instead of this is a great way to level up. Now, part of what I was gonna say earlier about the proximity principle is when you go to conferences, like Grant Cardone thing yesterday, let's be very clear. If I came in there, I mean, I mean, not necessarily me, but another woman came in there in like a dress to kill with the hair looking great, Grant Cardone events are usually skewed towards men and salesmen and go-getter men and men who own their own business and construction guys. And there were several young black and Hispanic guys who bought um, their girlfriend with them, their wife with them. You can see it. They're trying to get her to buy into the dream, right, that they can do this. And for me, I want to be like, don't be discouraged by this free seminar. Go to Grant Cardone's 10X next year with your wife. And that's how you're going to convince her because you're going to really see it on a bigger level. But if you were a single woman and you looking for a man, honey, these Grand Cardone events, they be the men just be in there falling out the sky. You'd be like, good Lord, uh, you know, and usually a go getter. Right. Same thing with some of these other real estate conferences. It's usually very men driven. Um, but there is a, a section of women that are starting to come in. And you can kind of basically get a group of women that you just connect with and talk with all the time. Like, hey, yeah, girl, how you doing? because they, they know what it's like to be a woman in that kind of field, right? Um, and, that, and that's another great part of it, why I go. <clears throat> but it's the proximity pr principle is, if you kind of put yourself in a, you write on a piece of paper, where do you wanna be? And then you move yourself towards it. So when I lived in Austin, I was in this, um, I was in the side of town. People were like, why are you living over there? You know, I'm sorry, you guys. I crossed this particular space and the internet knocked me off. But I'm back. I'm back. Um, so I remember moving in Austin to this one side of town. And this girl was like, why are you living over there with those white people? That's essentially what she said. And I was like, I just want to live on the nice side of town. This has nothing to do with white or black people. I want to live on the nice side of town. There are areas where black people are the wealthy black people and you live in those areas, right? Uh, and wealthy Hispanic and all these other things. And what I was trying to convey to her is, I want to be where the money is. I want to be where there's people making money, this area is safe, the area is, it promotes what? Friendliness. When I live in certain areas and I'm walking around conducting myself, the men are friendlier, the women are friendlier, the, the police are friendlier, everything, why? Because that area is a proximity of what? Safety, a proximity of whatever. Now, when it comes to jobs, a lot of times people say, well, Erica, I'm not really looking to take a part-time job. I don't want to be around, you know, these knuckleheads. And, you know, I see all these men who complain about they can't find part-time work. I'm like, you can go work at any Lowe's or Home Depot on the weekends. You can be surrounded by other men or other people working part-time. 
And really what they're saying is I don't want to be in the proximity of people I don't think are winning in life. Or I don't want to be associated with that particular career. Which has some truth to it. I, I remember talking to this guy and he was saying, how do I look, Erica, going from this really high, important sales job to this other job? I said, well, it doesn't matter how you look because if you're broke and you can't keep your apartment, you're going to look poor and you're going to look evicted. That's how you're going to look. Um, and so there's seasons of doing what you have to do, but taking the afternoons to, to, to elevate yourself. How do you elevate yourself? I talked about a couple of shows ago and the thumb, the thumbnail is on, is on purpose. I'm, there's a purpose for me doing the thumbnail. Um, the other day I was listening to Cam, Kevin Samuels and he was saying how he went somewhere and all these girls are all kind of gathered in there and they were all overweight and kind of dressing dumpy, you know, you know, frumpy or however the word is. Um, and very loud and carrying on. And I'm like, yeah, they have grouped themselves with likeness, right? They're in proximity of people like them. But they are they in proximity of what they want. Now, yeah, it, it's also the, the mount. is Something's wrong with this mount. So it won't lock in. So at, at, at best, that's what I tell you guys. Don't look, don't look at it. Just listen to it like a podcast. You don't have to watch me watch me talk to hear it, you know? Hold on. Yes, and someone's gonna be like, but it's a video, Erica. I'm like, I know it's a video. But I can't get the uh the mount to tighten at all. I think it's just gonna be new mount time. There's no need for you to message me on Facebook or Instagram for one on one advice. Best thing you can do is book a consult. That's the best way to reach me. Um, I know people always don't complain, but I'm just like, there's nothing I can do with it. It's, it's, it's pretty much broken. I got to get another one. Plus this Jeep, you're up higher, shots, all that stuff. So back to what I was saying. Kevin Samuels, just listen to it like a podcast. Just put me in the backdrop. Like, And I want to thank the guy. I don't know his name, but I went to the bank and I had a lot of cash on me, but I went to the bank and this guy was in front of me and I start talking like hey everybody because you know I'm, I'm I speak to all the bankers because I'm in there so much and the guy was like Erica Williams he's like I heard your voice like I don't always watch your videos but I play you in the background I'm like thank you so you could just play the video if that can help uh, play in the background as you know noise uh, but anyway Kevin Samuels was talking about you know all these women are dressed this particular way you know dumpy is the word per se and I think about when you leave your house the proximity factor is important. It's not just who you're hanging out with, it's how you carry yourself. It's how you dress. Um, I remember the one time this man was saying, I'm a 40 year old man, but I wanna be comfortable, so I wear a hoodie and, and blue jeans. And I'm like, there's a degree of, uh, you know, that whole, what do you call it, tech startup look? You know, that whole like very comfortable look. And to some degree, everybody, when I talk to Europeans, they're like, Americans always dress casual. They never dress up. And to some degree, they're right. We really, we've really taken it to the max, right? In America, you really rarely are forced to dress up or have to dress up. <coughs> Let's get some water in us. So that even when you see pictures of all white parties, or pictures where it tells you at the event to wear a cocktail dress or dress up. There will still be women and men not dressing up, not following the rules, wearing t-shirts and jeans. And I'm glad at least they came out of the house to go to the event, but that just shows you like, that's very an American thing. Um, you can't like, there was a girl who was arrested in Thailand. She literally was wearing beach wear that was see-through. And people were like, oh, they just arrested her cause she was black. I was like, no, she's wearing see-through like nightgown material in a holy place they don't play that nowhere in other countries they don't you're not going to come to somebody's church in victoria's secret nightwear or beachwear you're not going to do that especially in israel you're not going to you know there's a lot of places overseas and in japan places where they would prefer you cover your shoulders and many people go it's hot i'm gonna wear a tank top whenever i want you can do whatever you want but that's why i've, I've always carried those little sweaters they like teacher sweaters from the law because you never know when you're about to go to a place and they be looking at you like if you don't cover yourself up cover them girls up and put shoulder on something right 
and that's the sad part is like it was an opportunity for her to learn something or when they asked her to leave the first time not just not only just leave she stayed and took it like a photo shoot at a holy site in a see-through and everybody was like you guys are haters you guys are you guys are hating on this beautiful black woman's clothes i'm like no it's, it has nothing to do with hating it has to do with decorum it has to do with tact and this is why a lot of people can't move up it's not racism always sometimes it's classism so you, my whole point of this principle pr proximity theory is what i'm trying to say is you can go live over here in gallery in houston but if you're not conducting yourself right if you're not dressing right you know the guy or girl who owns a company they may want to give you a chance but if you're not even conducting yourself in a, a reasonable manner why should they <clears throat> i remember i wanted to hire this young guy but he was cussing all the time and i'm like dude i cannot if you feel that comfortable you're i just cannot i cannot it's not gonna work <clears throat> and there's just a difference between um there's just a difference in people wanting proximity like and this is the thing this is a prime example a lot of people love saying gold diggers gold diggers well the average dude's making 50k a year and less honestly 30k you have no gold to get dig kevin simmons made a good point where he was like you know somebody asked should i be looking for a wife overseas he's like if you make 50k a year why that's a fantasy you're gonna go overseas and get her and bring her here and she's gonna still look at you like you need to make more money you 50k a year is not enough depending on where you are but mostly it's not for you to have a stay-at-home wife that you can pay all the bills have food and still go out and thrive now people will say erica you can do it i did it when i was younger or my wife stayed home listen you know young teenage young newly married oh wow there's about to be an accident on the road y'all this suv is not paying attention shame on them y'all these people just just because you in a pickup truck does not mean you need to act like that yes and send money home to relatives <clears throat> let me add that on there too because i remember my friend when he got married his wife was working and she was sending her whole paycheck home her whole paycheck and he thought she was just sitting the money on the side so when she asked to go on a vacation he thought well, well where's the money you've been working you've been working for six months she said oh i send that home and this girl's korean korean people ain't broke but she still sent her whole paycheck home help her grandma and her mom and Korean people aren't broke in their country. They, and that's a that's a, a well a pretty well to do country. But I think her, her her grandparents were a little elderly. She was trying to help. And so even a girl who comes from a, a half a, a really decent country is is has a mindset and a theory to send money home. Dominicans send money home. Any country y'all want to name, Brazilians, any of these people. The think about it. Uh the girl that was saying she her parents were from Vietnam, she's like five hundred dollars my husband was given an attitude about but five hundred dollars is someone's whole month pay so they don't care right they don't care and so a lot of this this talk that we're hearing on youtube is fantasy it's a fantasy i actually am in proximity with actually wealthy men and you know what they do they go out and they go out they enjoy themselves and they look for women who enjoy themselves and they they have a good time but they're not they're not looking to like save some uh waitress from her troubles just because she's hot and uh, you know what i mean th that that's not that's not realistic that's not realistic i go to too many conferences too many seminars i've gone to too many banquet dinners and people go well the wives look kind of average here and i go but that's just it they met these women for what proximity they probably met her when she was in college or when she was here or there it's the closeness it's the proximity but it's how you also carry yourself so I, I did all that to say I want you guys not only you know reading books that help your mind is you guys watch me on this channel I'm I have the personal chef I gotta get a different one I gotta get a black one that can do keto I just cannot eat her food I'm sorry um, the one I have now I just can't eat it I just can't I have a personal trainer I sit here and I drink the juices I do all these workouts I go to yoga with certain ladies why because I'm trying to get myself closer to what I think my life and body should look like Okay, and it's important because if you're hanging around people who think it's acceptable to dress, you know, listen, I have this rule, right? When I fly in the airport, I fly with my hair out. And some people are like, I'll wear a bonnet when I won't. I'll do this now. I'm like, you can't fly with me. That's what hats are for. 
You're going out of the house. This isn't your bedroom. The, 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 the whole do-rag cap thing. I have no patience for that. None. If you have to wear a do-rag all day and night, baby, your hair just ain't meant to make waves. It's just Brillo and let it go. Right? You, some of the concepts that people are doing is like, these aren't things you carry yourself out of the house with anyway. And people go, oh, you're being classes, Erica. You're being classes. No, I've seen girls who are, um, I've seen lesbians dress great. There was a girl at the event yesterday. She was a lesbian, had her hair pulled back. She had a vest on and button up pants, like the, you know, like dress suit kind of look. And I was like, there's nothing wrong with what she's wearing. She's being who she is herself. We're not, she, we're not making her be fake and dressed appropriately. So, so you can you can be yourself and dress any type of way you want. So, you know, I, I think it's important for people to understand that, like, they think proximity and dress, you know, <clears throat> dressing a certain way, they're gonna lose who they are. No, you can still be uniquely you. You have to. You can you can wear a very simple. And I say this and black men get so mad. I posted it on here and on Instagram. And I was like, if you're a black man, a black button up of blue jeans and a pair of like nice shoes, not sneakers, but shoes will get you in any door. Oh, Eric, everybody don't want to wear that. Everybody trying to look like that. That's a frat boy look. And I'm like, a pair of blue jeans and a black button up is a frat boy look? When did that happen? I mean, that's just a very simple thing. You could put a jacket over that or take a jacket off. And dress it up and go whatever wherever you want whatever restaurant i've seen that at church countless times where guys will literally have on a pair of blue jeans a button-up shirt and a jacket and he's and he's at church and that's what he's wearing and and we're just letting people dress any old way like last night i wore a dress and they're like oh dressing cowboy boots that's what you wear i'm like well we we did say we're going out right this is dinner correct that's what i'm gonna wear to dinner like as a dressing cowboy boot and it's just a proximity of things. How do you want people to talk to you? How do you want people to treat you? How do you how do you want people to act towards you? And and I know people say they should treat me with respect regardless of what I'm wearing, Erica. I get you, baby. I get you. These are all true. But again, if you get up in the morning and you tell me, and I, I forgot her name, I apologize, but thank you. Someone showed me um, their journal entries and their... They wrote out their whole budget on pen and paper. I'm telling you, it's life changing. When you write that that money out on piece of paper, it's life changing. But um, I forgot her name off the top of my head. But thank you for sharing that with me yesterday in Houston. I thought that was amazing. Um, but that's the th- that's just it. That's just it. Like if you know how much you need to make, you know where you want to go. What are the daily habits getting you there? Because you'll eventually start to change. And I remember one time. Oh man. I remember I had wanted to buy something and I said, I will, I'm thinking about how it will impact me. And my mother was like, well, just buy it if you want to buy it. And I said, well, that's just it. That's impulse buying. That's emotional buying. You have to think about if this is going to be good for you. Is this going to be long-term useful for you? And people don't really think about that. So, um, another book I think other than the proximity factor is, gosh, I, I mean, I already say the one thing by Gary Keller, which you guys have heard that a ton of times. There's some other ones I wanted to pick that's in my Audible that I'm working through now. I think it's, um, man, I have to think about it. Yeah, I can't remember off the top of my head which book it is. But the essentially what it does is I add, I have Audible and I add an audio book to it every month. So when I'm on planes, I, I literally just, you know, listen to the, listen to the audio book, get, it, get myself just renewed right you're just renewing and changing your mind with books and the people you associate with it's 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 a daily fight it's a daily fight and what you'll notice as you start being more and more successful because it's it's literally td jakes one time said misery loves company no one's complaining when you're all miserable when you're all not doing well when you're all broke it's all these jokes and like girl i wish i made more money and you know all this and that but when you start um growing when you start being successful when you start making money then people got complaints then people have things to say well i wouldn't do this or people try to claw on to stay with you now what does that mean when they try to claw on to stay with you they 
try to do what you're doing and, and want you to drag them along. I've experienced that with a couple different people. And I, I go, no, no, no. Your journey is your own. My journey is my own. If you copy what I do, it won't be your true vision story. It won't be your true purpose. Like, I feel that I have purpose in this. There's a, a, a secret mission to why I'm doing all this, right? And if you just copy, yeah, piggybacking, yeah. If you just piggyback, you'll get burnt out because it was never your true, your reason why I won't match mine. It's a difference, right? Um, like, you see all these people doing these little YouTube challenges and all these things. Like, what was the purpose of you originally making your, your channel? Uh, like, this one guy was saying how he kind of got bored of doing the same fitness stuff. I think it was Nick Bear. And then he started documenting his Iron Man journey and him trying all these running and challenges. And what ended up happening is he kind of got that purpose back. Because it's like so many, only, so many, so many times you can show your food. It, it, it's it's sh mission. Showing your purpose and mission. And, and, and you, you can tell the difference when people have been reading books and educating themselves that they're just not, they're just not absolutely like, oh my God, these new concepts. They've been, they've been immersing themselves in it. But I, but I need you also to be immersing yourself in action because I'm telling you, I've talked to some people, they've been doing stuff for like five years and I'm like, are you really doing it? It's like the whole point of me making that video, do you want to win or not? Because I hear people talking a good game, man. They're talking a good game, but they have no results right or even better <clears throat> there was a guy who you know he wanted to do this you know said what's what's your goal i want to have like 500 units of real estate in three years i want to do this and i go well what are you doing right now well i don't really have a lot of money saved i'm like you shouldn't even be on here you're telling me you want 500 units of real estate you need to go find someone in your city who's the biggest developer or real estate person you can find and go work for them on top of your regular job hear me out I didn't say quit your job I said on top of your regular job so if they got something for you to do on the weekends you do it if you got something in the night you do it because you're not getting to 500 units of real estate you know uh, without absolute 24 just hardcore focus not in a three-year period and I like yesterday Grant Cardone did this good thing he said how many of y'all have five thousand dollars in your account he said, you broke anyway. Might as well just push it on. He's like, one car accident, you're gone. It's gone. He said, how many of y'all in here got, you know, $50,000, 50, right? And people are, you know, he's like, you broke too. One cancer scare, one heart attack, one long hospital stay. That's, that's it. That money gone. And he was like, you're just as broke as the other guy. He's like, who in here has $150,000 in equity in your home? And, you know, people reluctantly raised their hand because I was joking to the girl beside me who watches the channel. Thank you for watching. I said, I said, man, he tried to get some people robbed up in here, right? And we were laughing because, um, you know, raising your hands and you got money like that. That's a, I don't know, we in Houston, right? So, but he was saying, if you think about it, if you're not going to do anything with the equity, then it don't matter. And he's right. What's the game plan for it? So you got people out here who I've got money, I've got this, I've got that, but they have no game plan for their life. They have no game plan for the money. It, it, it really becomes this, so what? You're not going to do anything with it. So what? So I, I found it really uh, important to be there. You know, even though, and, and I also found it to realize, you know what? Only time I'm going to invest my time to see him is if I pay for the 10 next business boot camp. Or I go in person for a weekend. Or I start hiring more staff. That's when I'll go. And um, that's what I, I just, the more I thought about it, I'm like, yeah, that's when I'll go do those events. But for everybody else, I think you should. I think it's a good add to your calendar. It, you know, again, proximity. If you tell me, and I've been on consulting calls where people told me, hey, I want to do this, this, and this, and this is what I want my life to look like. And I go, okay, let's bust out a piece of paper. These are how many events you're going to go to a week. This is how many of this you're going to do a week. And this is what your life is going to look like. It's going to look way different than what you're you're trying to do here and and that's just it like that's the best thing I can tell you guys you tell me what you're where you're trying to go who you're trying to live by all those things we're just gonna reverse engineer it so you can get there sooner get there in a organized manner 
You tell me you want to go retire in the islands? We need to make that happen. You want to retire somewhere else? Again, people always say, well, do you think this is a good way to make money? You think this is a good idea to make money? You think... And I go, any idea, if you work it, will make money. And that's that's the mindset. you got to go ahead and change your mindset because when I'm in a lot of these groups, the whole passive, in, passive income or automatic income, we talk about that a lot, but they're all just techniques. You know, ticket resale. So here's the thing. Um, someone talked to me about it, and he was like, oh, ticket resale, I can do that. I said, well, do you have the patience to wait two to seven months on some of your returns? He's like, whoa, whoa, what do you mean? I said, well, you're going to buy tickets for concerts that don't come. I mean, when it, when it first gets released, you need to buy that ticket that day. And then when the event might be six months from now, the event might be four months from now. So you're just sitting to that money, you know, to that ticket sells because most people buy a ticket the last two weeks before an event, the la the day of, like I've gone on to look for football tickets today. We're going to go to the Tennessee, uh, Texas game, Texas Jaguars game. And so you're going to be waiting. Do you have that patience to wait? Can you tie up all your credit card money? Because I know the kid was going to use his credit card. And you can see the look in their eyes when we're doing the Zoom. It's like, oh, no. Oh, I can't wait no two to seven months. I need my money now, J.G. Wentworth. And, okay, so that's a passive answer that you're not there. You're not available. You're not at the level you can do that. So next, all right, so T-shirt, like the print-on-demand business T-shirts, hats, you know, coming up with ideals. Yeah, all those things are easy because it's printed up. You don't have to package anything. But guess what? Because the margins are thinner, you have to have great marketing to draw people's attention to what? The, the, the website. If not, it's just a Shopify site. Or it's just a, you know, it's just, it just is. And that's, that's the thing. A lot, of, a lot of stuff, all these things are going to take work. And that's why when you talk about the proxim, proximity, being close to people who have money, close to people who are really doing these things in business, you see the difference, right? Like I've been to Nick Bear's gym several times. It's like this dude's been for seven years building the supplement company, and now they've got a gym with probably inventory. It's probably like two million dollars in there in inventory alone, but they always sell it out. Black Friday and like uh, I forgot sometime in the spring, whatever the spring is for like you know before everybody thinks they need to work out for their summer bodies, they sell out couple times over you know so it's all if you get close enough to people actually doing it, you will know a lot of things I share on this channel are legit real and me actually working myself there me actually you know changing clothes changing my body changing my mindset to be in the right space just is so even the small things about like this guy messaged me about the trucks do colors matter on the trucks and I said yeah Go read any marketing book or advertising book about color. Even on this channel, uh, prime example, there's a study on YouTube. If a woman has lipstick, there is a uh, three minute retention time longer on her channel than if she doesn't. Hence why you see me now every time I come on here with lipstick. Okay, I'm either in a dark red or a bright red. Why? Because those are colors of all kind of stuff. If you Google it, you can put it in the chat. Um, I haven't read the chat because I'm driving, but like I know you guys are going crazy in there because it's just going, it's just. Zoom, 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 zoom. And make sure y'all hit the like button. It's like 160 people and like, you know, and, and like 50 likes. Likes are free. The engagement is free for the channel. But, you know, put in the comment section what are some of you guys' why? And don't give me no vague, no, my family live free, retirement. Like, you know, write it out. It's okay. My why is I want to be able to take a month off, Erica. My why is I want to eat high quality foods. My why is I want to, you know, have juices every day from Juice Land. And I don't care that it's $12. I want to whatever, right? You have to, you have to write out a really defined why. I want, you know, to retire my wife because I want her home whenever I want her home. You know, whatever. That's your why. And people can just respect it. Just respect your why. I want my kids to see me look this way. I want my nephew. And, and for me, my nephews have never grown up without the idea of both me and my sister having our own businesses. And several family members having their own business. So th they've been trained. They've been educated. They've been shown. They can't never say somebody didn't show them, didn't teach them, don't know how to manage stuff, don't know how to make, uh, you know, marketing. They used to see when my sister used to put out bandit signs everywhere for her hair salon. They used to see that all, all the time and her phone ring off the hook. 
They saw those things. So, I mean, part of, uh, I remember part of my original why one time was I wanted to take these private pilot classes so I could fly and plane more. It ain't cheap. I wanted to eat at particular restaurants without people saying, ooh, girl, that's expensive. I, I, I didn't want to hear that mess. I wanted to be able to rent big Airbnbs, 18-room Airbnbs at, you know, in the mountains and the beach and just call my family up. You want to fly? Hey, you want to fly in? Come on in. I'll pay for your ticket. Um, I remember writing a check to somebody for $4,000 and not caring. Not that I didn't care because I knew they weren't going to pay me back. That's not what it was. It's just I was like, I am doing this good thing because I can and it's not going to hurt me. Right? A lot of people are like, oh, I loaned my family member money and they didn't give it back to me. Yeah. Welcome to the world. That happens every day of the week. But you also need to like, you don't want to be anybody's free ATM for sure. But you don't want your whole day in life to be soured by the fact you gave your cousin $40 and they didn't give it back. Like $40? It's one thing if you said like $1,000, but $40? That's that's too much for me. Yeah, I can't. If you can't, you know, there's a difference between a warrior and a and a warrior. And if you if you go and the best thing you can do is go get the Audible um, Millionaire Mindset with T R R R Peckert, H A R K D. Anybody in the comments know who I'm talking about? Know the actual audiobook where it's like um, he's speaking to an audience, and he's like, it, the best part where he was making fun of this guy. He was like, oh my god. I put money in the stock market and he's like, oh, well, how much? I put $6 in the stock market the other day and it went down after I bought it. And he's like, okay, dude, you don't need to have any money in the stock market because if that, if it literally causes you worry at night, then that's not the investment for you. And some of your comments are like, what can I do where I can't lose money? I'm like, well, you're already losing money. You're losing money to taxes, inflation, everything. Well, if you know what I mean, no, I'm, I'm, I know what you mean, but do you know what I mean? You're already losing money every day you know what i mean like every day you try to have a business without proper lc and structure and documentation you're losing money what are you talking about and i just remember people being like with that blank look in their face i'm like you're already losing money every day your money's not making 10 to 15 percent back returns you're losing money that's, I, there's several people who've gone back into my old lending club videos on this channel oh i lost so much money on lending club i never well, sir, the notes are $25. So if you're putting thousands of dollars into one person's pay, that's silly. Because it's only $25. So I've spread out $25 over $10,000 and I have not lost. People have been late paying, but they paid it. And their account went back to good. And so that's why I'm like, you're, you're, you probably put in that kind of person that's running around on YouTube. I put money in the Lindy Club and I lost money. It's like, okay, how much you put in? I put a whole... $300 in there, you're like, oh gosh, I'm so sorry that you lost $25 out of your $300. It's so, such a shame. Such a shame. But when you you realize any investment can have some risk, any of that can have some risk. So, I don't want to bore you guys to death, but I just had to do this quick one here talking about proximity, talking about your why, you know? What's my why? I want to be able to just, <coughs> excuse me, hop in the vehicle, drive down to Houston and go check on properties if I need to. I want to be able to hop on the plane and go to Detroit and make sure everything's working like it should. I want to have a very uh, distinctive why. I want to be able to book tickets and don't care. Oh no, I'm not sleepy. I'm coughing from last night's party and my throat is extremely dry and it hurts <laughs> it hurts it hurts a lot so anyway plus I have brunch with my friend when I get to off yeah T.R. Heckert travel seven continents you guys are going to have fire conversations thank you guys for putting the comments in there because uh, when I read these later after brunch with my friend, it's gonna be good. So anyways, you guys, also, uh, Atlanta, September 28th and 29th, for those who are coming, we have amazing gift bags. Um, 
I'm super excited about this event. Super Mastermind with me, Kendra Barnes, the K Resource, Airbnb Specialist, and the Charm City Buyers, Kira and Khalil, coming out of Baltimore. They have the Next Gen, they have OPM, and several other things. There's a whole category of videos of Kira on here. Then, September 5th, I'll be in Denver, Colorado. Denver, Colorado, people, thank you already for buying tickets. There's a lot of you who bought tickets. We're going to have a great event. <clears throat> really good connection. Bring your bring your laptop, be ready. <clears throat> October 12th, Terry and me in Dallas, downtown Dallas. It's going to be lit. Um, you know, she's going to start it off with scaling your portfolio. And I'm going to finish it out with scaling your business and your life. Uh, there are several big conferences I'm going to be speaking at coming up like March and May and some other ones, but I can't name them yet. We're not, we're not officially on the docket yet. So, so until I'm officially on the docket, I will not be promoting people's stuff till I'm officially on the docket. November, I'll be in LA in Oakland um, doing like little four-hour workshops. Las Vegas, you're coming up for the fall. I think Las Vegas, you're closer to December. I got to look at the calendar again. Um, and then who else? It was Chicago and Detroit again, but actually my event, not someone else's event. So, all right, you guys, this is your girl, Erica from the classy Climb blog. Listen, there's 150 of you here, 70 likes hit the like button. As I close it out, you guys are amazing. Listen, my why and your why are maybe different, but I definitely want to be able to homeschool some kiddos here soon in the future, live a great life, be able to take a month off enjoy myself treat yourself you know i think i i like having weekly massages monthly facials all these things add to the why right they they're just symptoms of the bigger why the bigger why is freedom freedom right right never able to go into a job again with somebody getting on my nerves freedom some of you love work and i want you to enjoy your job just because there's some people out here quitting jobs don't mean you need to um if you're good at your work continue to do your work just build up streams of income so if you need to walk it away and i will i will tell you if you get on a phone call with me and you talk about you want to quit your job and you have no rentals i'm gonna be like no you can't just quit your job because you have some side business you need something that's boring not exciting that's consistent and that is real estate always 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 so thank you guys for coming on the show today there's a video coming up later of the houston video we go to the turkey leg place we have Everybody and their mom. You got flipping a house in there. You got Melvin from Detroit out of Houston. You got so many cameos in that video. It's crazy. But y'all will enjoy it. I release it. I think it comes out later tonight, like 6.30. 6.30 Texas time. And uh, this is your girl, Erica. This is my view right now. Just out here on this Wrangler, living the best life. Thank you guys for coming out today. Thank you for listening. Have a good day, y'all.